Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and in this video we're breaking down one of the big things about the brand new Final Marvels trailer. She tore a hole in space. There's a different reality leading into ours. Heavy spoilers ahead, and I want to talk about a major thing that's going to be happening in the movie. This is covering all the rumours going around about the post credit scenes, and how the X-Men could be brought into the MCU. You don't want to know, you know where to go. Go go to Ryan Airy, you know I was going to slag him off, but he's actually a nice guy. Anyway, with that out of the way, thanks for clicking this, and psych! Shut the f*** up, Ryan Airy! Okay, so according to the leaks around the movie, we'll culminate with Thor Ben constantly opening up portals through using the other bangle that we saw Ms. Marvel getting in her show. This will be to replenish resources for Hala after it was completely destroyed due to Carol killing the Supreme Intelligence. The other usage of the bangle will then cause an incursion to happen which involves two worlds colliding into each other. This was something that was a major part of the build-up to Secret Wars with Jonathan Hickman's run discussing how best to handle these universe destroying events. An incursion involves two worlds being pulled towards each other and if they collide it wipes out both worlds. The Illuminati started secretly destroying worlds heading to the 616, and in the end this whittled things down to just two worlds remaining. That was them and the Ultimate Universe, which is what eventually took us into Secret Wars. Now, According to the rumours that came out for the screening of the Marvels a couple of months ago, we'll see one of these being caused in the final act. We'll then watch Monica go and fix it from the other side, which is when she'll be stuck in this alternate reality. Monica will then wake up in a hospital bed where she'll be greeted by a couple of familiar faces. The first of these will be her mother, who we saw became Captain Marvel when she was in the 838. I'm not sure if this is that universe, but it could definitely be due to another character that pops up. That is none other than Kelsey Grammer's Beast, who's now fully CGI instead of a costume and outfit. Now according to the rumours, he was placed in the last minute because Marvel have realised they need to get to the X-Men fast. Tickets for the Marvels have been selling like cold cakes, and so far it's the lowest pre-sale tickets for an MCU movie this side of COVID. So what they've done is show they're tying things together and are pulling things across as fast as they can to hit Deadpool 3. Now as I said, these are still rumours with us getting the info from across a lot of different sources. The scene originally just had Monica and Maria meeting up, and this was what was shown at a screening back in June. You have to remember, Monica never got to say goodbye to her mother, and thus they're having this moment to kind of be like, the character gets to say goodbye. However, they then realise that they had to move things up and tease more X-Men in the universe to get people back on board. Now MT is actually going to be seeing this movie tonight, so if this video is deleted, then you know what happened. Now I'll leave it up even if it's wrong, but we'll have a clearer idea over the next couple of days about what's going to be popping up. Now from what I've heard, if this is the A38, then this is still going to be the members of the Illuminati. Maria will have survived her encounter with Wanda, and in the aftermath of it, she'll have then reformed the group with other members. If you've ever read Jonathan Hickman's run, then you'll also know that a similar thing happened during that. Beast ended up joining the Illuminati, and here it's likely in the wake of Professor X's death. The Illuminati was actually formed to represent each aspect of humanity, so every single side had their own representative. For example, you had Xavier for the X-Men, and Black Bolt to stand in for the Inhumans. Namor was the ruler of Atlantis, and Doctor Strange was the head of magic. So Beast stepping in makes a lot of sense, as he's up there as one of the most intelligent mutants on the planet. Now going forward, from what I've been told, they're going to sort of be bringing all these timelines together. In Deadpool 3, we'll apparently see things picking up from the days of Future Past ending, where we watch Logan return to the present. Yeah, he saw that the school was still fine, and that Beast himself was working as a teacher. This will then all head towards Deadpool 3, where we'll watch as they bring more of the X-Men in. Now last year, you might remember that we talked about what the overall plan for Secret Wars was, and how it talked about sort of doing a soft reboot. This is something lots of sources have backed up since, and I think that'll be used as a way to bring X-Men into the main timeline. If you've read the Secret Wars comics, I'm sure you'll be familiar with this, and you'll also know they did something similar with Miles Morales. Miles was off over in the Ultimate Universe, but this event streamlined everything and brought him into the main one. Now what I think is going to happen is that we'll see this other world where the X-Men were always a thing, and that their history will be filled in during an upcoming show. That is of course going to be X-Men 97, which we know is getting worked on for Disney+, Plus. in that we have Professor X in his yellow chair, which we also saw popping up during Multiverse of Madness. That too used notes from the X-Men theme, so I'm guessing that they're going to just be pulling all that across. They could then fill us in on everything we need to know, and that could act as filling in the timeline at the end of Days of Future Past. 
And this could also be used as a way to show how the Illuminati are set up and then take us directly into the events of Multiverse of Madness. Now, one thing I've always been confused about with Marvel is, is the whole prejudice thing that's surrounding the mutants. After all, we have so many people with superpowers in the Marvel Universe, yet there's one group who are hated on because of it. I know there's reasons because they're mutants, but I really don't think that would matter when you have other people running around with similar abilities. Anyway, a way I think this could cause an issue is by the fact that they come from another world. If the universes are indeed streamlined, then we may see the X-Men being brought into the 616. There could then be this prejudice against these people because technically they aren't part of this world. Now Beast also kind of shows the direction that they're going and how they're pulling in a lot of the legacy actors. From what I've heard, Feige's plans to bring in the older cast and then once the MCU does its soft reboot, have other actors coming in. Now, on top of this, the other post credit scene supposed to involve Ms. Marvel who tracks down Kate Bishop. Throughout the film, Fury will have a device and this basically gives him profiles on all the soups. This is something that we saw him using during Secret Invasion and at one point Kamala will apparently get her hands on it. Using this, she'll then track down some of the heroes, which is what will take her to Kate Bishop. It's here that she'll then come face to face with her and they'll apparently also bring up Cassie Lang. Now, this obviously helps to set up the Young Avengers, which is something that we've had teased for a long time. These two credit scenes are extremely important for the MCU's future with them not only further ushering in the X-Men but also setting up this group. Honestly, I kind of wish they'd stop making the post credit scenes the most hyped up things about these movies because I'd have loved to have seen these storylines actually integrated into the plot. I know that the Marvels is having a difficult time marketing this and you can see why they went as teaser heavy as they have in that brand new trailer. Will it be enough? Well, we saw Superman couldn't help save Black Adam and I kind of think it's just a sign of the time that people's tastes have changed. Now I think the X-Men coming back is a big thing for Marvel though, as they're probably the studio's most popular group. Well, well they were before the Avengers hit their high point, but definitely in comics before the MCU dominated movies. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and if you weren't interested in seeing this film, has this final push got you on board? Comment below and let me know, and make sure you subscribe for videos like this every day. Please drop a like on the video, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. You get early access to videos every week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch, we've also got our t-shirt line located below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our Theory Time one, House of Dragons stuff, Loki tees and a lot more. We drop new designs on there all the time too, so definitely keep an eye out for them and thanks for all your support. Now if you want something else to watch, we've got a video on screen right now talking about all the shots we haven't seen yet in Loki Season 2. This is pretty much breaking down what we think will happen in the finale, so if you're interested in that, then please head over there. But out of the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.